Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Maths is Smart Tips. Today in this video, we are solving the questions of LPP and classical mechanics of WB set 2022 mathematical science. And this is the part 5 video of WB set 2022. The in the previous four videos, we are already solved the ODE, PD, Laplace, Fourier, uh, integral equation, run algebra, linear algebra, and complex analysis. And here in this video, we are solving these two topics, questions from these two topics. So uh, those who are new, those who are not watching the previous video, so I will share the link in the description also here in the i tab. Also more videos of WB set, uh, you can check the playlist of the channel page. So you can also check those, those videos also. So let's start the videos and before starting the solution of this video, I am requesting you to all those who are new in my channel, please like the video, comment if you have any doubt in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe the channel and share with your friends. So let's start. Uh, a question from classical mechanics the question says that a particle of mass m slides down without friction along a curve z equal to 1 plus x square by 2 in the xz plane under the action of constant gravity suppose that z axis be the vertically upwards then the lagrangian of the motion is so we have to find the lagrangian l now the general formula to find the lagrangian l equal to kinetic energy minus potential energy that is t minus b so we have to find the kinetic energy so kinetic energy t equal to half of mv square and since the curve of the equation is given in the xz plane that is the motion uh, occurs in the xz plane so we take only the uh, x dot square and z dot square so this is equal to t equal to half into m uh, into x dot square plus z dot square and given that z equal to 1 plus x square by 2 is the curve so z dot equal to that is the time derivative equal to x into x dot so uh, t equal to half m into x dot square into 1 plus x square now find the potential energy potential energy v equal to simply mgh and since it is given that the distance uh, is uh, vertically upward a z axis so we take the h that is height as z and which is also given that z equal to 1 plus x square by 2 so therefore this is the potential energy and simply put these two values in the uh, of t and b in l so l equal to t minus b gives half m x dot square into 1 plus x square minus mg into 1 plus x square by 2 so here uh, option a is clearly correct answer now go to the next question the question says that for what values of m and n the transformation small qp to capital qp given by this p and q represent a canonical transformation now uh, let uh, this qp to qp be a canonical transformation these two are the generalized coordinate and this is generalized momentum so the necessary and sufficient condition that the transformation is canonical it says that the Jacobian del of capital Q1, capital Q2, capital Qn, if there are n uh, such coordinates and capital P1, capital P2, capital Pn, if there are such uh, n generalized momentum given, then this uh, the this Jacobian del capital Q1, capital Qn and capital P1 to capital Pn and del of small Q1, small Qn up to and small P1, small P2 and on to small pn this jacobian is equal to one now here in the question it is given that there are only uh, one generalized coordinate and one generalized momentum is given therefore this is simply uh, that this jacobian del capital q del small q del capital q del small p and del capital p del small q del capital p del small p this is equal to one now del capital p u del small q equal to we have find this from this so this is equal to m q power m minus 1 cos np minus n uh, q power m sin np and this is del p del q equal to uh, m cap uh, q power m n minus 1 and sin np and n capital uh, q power m into cos np so this is equal to we have to we have find that uh, this is clearly m n into q power 2 m minus 1 cos square np plus sin square np this is equal to 1 now we note that this value is already 1 therefore the this value should also should be equal to 1 so if this 2 are 1 then we can take this uh, as mn equal to 1 and q power 2 m minus 1 is equal to also 1 so that means 1 1 and this 1 gives totally 1 so capital q power m 2 m minus 1 equal to 1 gives capital uh, sorry small q 
power 2 m minus 1 equal to 1 this gives this is equal to we can write q power 0 so 2 m minus 1 equal to 0 this gives m equal to half and uh, since m equal to half from m in this is also should 1 then this gives m n equal to 1 and half n equal to 1 this gives n equal to 2 therefore the value of m n should be m equal to half and n equal to 2 therefore option c is correct here now go to the next question this question again from uh, classical mechanics the question says that which of the following statements is not correct here four statement is given to solve this question uh, for a closed system we have homogeneity of time implies conservation of energy homogeneity of space implies conservation of linear momentum and isotropy of space implies conservation of angular momentum now we have to find the false statement that is not true statement in option a it says that for a closed system isotropy of space implies conservation of angular momentum yes this is correct statement therefore this is not 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 correct this is not the false statement and the second option says that for a closed system homogeneity of space implies conservation of linear momentum yes this is also correct statement so this is not the false statement and option c is, says that for a closed system homogeneity in time implies conservation of energy yes this is also correct statement so this is the this is not the false statement and option b it says that for a uh, closed system homogeneity of space implies conservation of energy this is not correct statement so this is the correct answer of our problem since the homogeneity of space implies conservation of angular momentum not the conservation of energy so this is the correct answer for this problem now go to the next question the next question is from lpb the question says that consider the lpb maximize z equal to x1 uh, plus 3x2 subject to these two conditions uh, so we have first plot the uh, graph of this lpb of these two constants so the, the line first line we can write in this form x1 by 8 by 3 plus x2 by 8 by 6 equal to 1 and in the second line in this form and if we plot the first line then this should be this is the first line equation of first line this and equation of second line equal to this uh, this is the sorry this is the first line and this is the second line so we have find that uh, such that we note that if we put 0 0 in the line and then 0 less than equal to 8 this satisfies the first inequality therefore uh, we should the we give the arrow towards the origin and since we put 0 0 in this then this is also gives 0 less equal to 10 which is also satisfies therefore both the arrow is towards the origin that is this is the clearly the region bounded region and since the bounded region uh, so we find uh, try to find the solution of this lpb this point this point this point and this point so this point 0 0 this point 2 0 this point gives here the intersection of these two lines gives uh, 11 by 6 and 5 by 12 this 11 by 6 and 5 by 12 these two so this is the point of intersection this and this is the point 0 comma 8 by 6 now we have find the value of z to show that the value of z is unique or not so at 0 0 z gives 0 since z equal to this at 2 0 z equal to 0 at 11 by 6 5 by 12 z equal to this and at 0 8 by 6 um, the value of z should be 4 that is uh, 3 2, uh, 2 so this is the maximum value for z therefore and this is the unique maximum value therefore this is the LPB has clearly as a unique solution also there is a shortcut you can apply this we know that for a maximization problem and less equal to type inequalities that is bounded type inequalities is must have a unique solution you can apply this as a short trick but this is the complete procedure so go to the next question the next question says that consider a non-linear optimization problem min z equal to sin x1 x2 minus cos of x1 minus x2 then z mean occur at now this is a non-linear LPP, so we have to find mean z equal to this. We take this is as a function of f of x1 and x2. 
we have to find the partial derivative of f with respect to x1 and x2 and put the partial derivatives as 0 and then find the value of try to find the value of x1 and x2 for this problem. So, del f del x1 gives this x2 cos x1 x2 plus sin x1 minus x2 and del f del x2 gives x1 cos x1 x2 minus sin of x1 minus x2. Now, del f del x1 equal to 0 and del f del x2 equal to 0 gives x2 uh, this is equal to 0 and this is equal to 0. Now, from 2 using 1, from this equation we uh, put the value of sin of x1 minus x2 to the other and we get x1 plus x2 cos of x1 minus x2 equal to 0. Now, there are two cases may arrive uh, either x1 plus x2 equal to 0 or cos of x1 x2 equal to 0. Now, if x1 plus x2 equal to 0 then this gives x1 equal to minus x2 but in the option there is no such options are given therefore this case uh, is not possible now only the case is cos of x1 x2 equal to 0 now uh, we apply the option value of options first option is x1 not equal to x2 this is clearly uh, not available here so this is the not the correct option since here no value of x1 x2 given if x1 and x2 equal to pi by 2 then this uh, cos of pi square by 4 which is not equal to 0 therefore this option is also discarded now if x1 equal to x2 equal to root under 3 by 2 then cos of x1 x2 gives cos of 3 pi by 2 and this gives the value 0 so this is the correct option for our this problem and if we put x1 equal to 0 and x2 equal to pi then this gives cos 0 which is equal to 1 not equal to 0 therefore this d option is also discarded so here only c option is correct for this problem so this is the last question for this problem how was the video if the video is helpful then please give a like to this video share with your friends and subscribe the channel thank you friends see you again in the next video thank you